Hi, today we will continue the series of Behavior College Lecture about Reproductive Behavior. This is the third and the last presentation about this topic. Uh, so, let's start. In many species of birds and mammals, and some species of other types of animals, males help raise the offspring. In these cases, females would benefit by choosing the male that can provide the best care. So, the better the parent, the more offspring sh she's likely to rear. In the other species, males provide no care but maintain territories that provide food and nesting sites and predator refugees and so on. In such cases, females that choose males with the best territories will maximize their reproductive success, which is of course their main goal basically in life. In these cases, we are talking about something that is called the direct benefit of a wise mate choice. But there are some other options in nature when it, when it comes to this topic of a mate choice. So in other species, males provide no direct benefits of any kind to females. In such cases, it is not immediately obvious why females have to gain by being choosy. Moreover, why? What could be the possible benefit of choosing a male with an extremely long tail or a complex song? A number of theories have been proposed to explain the evolution of such processes. Uh, one idea is that females choose the male that is the healthiest or, or the oldest. Large males, for example, have probably been successful at living long, acquiring a lot of food and resisting of parasites and diseases and so on. Uh, in some birds, the, the brightness of male's color is a reflection of the quality of its diet and overall health, which basically is a direct sign of its ability and survival technique. First, to the extent that male's success in living long and prospering is the result of good genetic makeup, the female will be ensuring that her offspring receives good genes from their father. And there's actually lots of studies confirming that females have a good tactic in choosing males by this idea. Secondly, healthy males are less likely to be carrying diseases which might be transmitted to females during mating and also through genetics to their offspring. Another theory is called handicap hypothesis explaining the choosy property of animal females when no direct benefit is evident from a male. So, so called handicap hypothesis is something I left with the, in the last presentation to think about. You remember when I s stated that those ornaments preferred for mating, preferred by females, are actually a hazard for survival. So the handicap hypothesis is actually explaining this this problem. So the handicap hypothesis states that only genetically superior mates can survive with such a handicap. What this basically means is that even with an extra difficult situations for surviving, these super strong males will be able to survive. So they are better than good. They are good even in the extreme situations of having additional difficulties in surviving. So basically males, females by choosing a male with the, the largest handicap they are ensuring that the, her offspring will receive these quality genes. genes. Of course, the, the male offspring will also inherit the, the genes for the handicap. And for this reason, evolutionary biologists are still debating the merits of this hypothesis. But all in all, the, the natural selection has favored the evolutionary behaviors that maximize the reproductive success of males and, and females. So by evaluating then selecting mates with superior qualities, an animal can increase its reproductive success.
like mate choice, a mating system has evolved to maximize reproductive fitness. Thus, a few different strategies have been developed concerning sexual reproduction. So, there are three possible options if we recognize it monogamy, polygamy, and polyandry. Uh, monogamy is a situation when m one male is mating with one female in one mating season, and in some situations for the whole life, which would be the case with swans. Polygamy is a situation when one male uh, has many females as mating partners in one mating season and the good example of this is a um, bat mating strategy you can see them in this picture where this is one male uh, protecting the group of, of females with this case is really known in, in nature uh, in different um, mammal and, and bird species and um, polyandry is a situation when one female is mating with more males in the same mating season this situation at first glance is not really often in nature but is present um, mating system represent reproductive adaptations to ecological conditions basically so the need for parental care the ability of both sexes to provide it and the timing of female reproduction are important influences of the evolution of monogamy polygamy and polyandry that the, the mating system preferred considering offspring care it is also connected in mating strategy so for the example in some species the offspring are so-called altricial what this means they require prolonged and extensive care for example humans in these species the need for care by two parents will reduce the tendency for the male to desert his mate and seek other matings this means that by taking care of their offspring males are hiring the chance of their survival does the the passi passings of their genes to future generations. So this is the strategy of parental care. And there is the other situation in species when young, young are so-called precocial, and this means they require a little parental care. And in these cases, males may be more likely to be polygynous. So as, as mentioned many times before, it's, it's all connected and they there for a reason. So we mentioned here monogamy or polygamy, but about polyandry, it's still kind of taboo, but just at the first glance because new methods, for example, the DNA fingerprint, and this is the method that is used to, to determine the fatherhood. This method discovered a lot about um, polyandry type of, of reproduction behavior with animals and that for example in birds we discovered that polyandry is much more present than it was first thought to be but since it's kind of new discovery the the benefits of this kind of behavior still needs to be discussed even though there are some hints for example different genetic structure or having uh, some of the offsprings from um, more strong or bigger male so genetically preferable but on the other hand if you mate with a less quoting popular male maybe the, the, his genes are not preferable but he will then spend more time in the parental care so in that way uh, hiring the chance of the survival of his offsprings different strategy which of course the female is grateful for a bit of help around uh, raising the, the offsprings the bottom line is if there is a way of increasing reproductive success na natural selection will definitely favor its evolution and that is what I'm leaving you with for this mating behavior strategies 
and the next presentation we'll talk about some other things in behavioral ecology so talk to you soon bye